Hi everyone, my name is Emily Sturbis and I am a current fourth year medical student who will be talking today about the anatomic variants to be aware of as you observe hepatic embolizations, while also going over some of the basic wires and catheters whose names you should be familiar with. This presentation was made with the help of Dr. Donna D'Souza, who also contributed the images of variant anatomy shown in the presentation. For a broader overview of transhepatic arterial chemoembolization, check out our other videos on taste. As a disclaimer, although I mention specific wires and catheters in the later part of this video and include the names of the companies that make them, neither I nor the Medical Student Council endorse or promote one specific brand over another. Before diving too deeply into anatomy, we'll start off with some physiology. You may ask why it is possible to embolize hepatic tumors without damaging the normal liver. This stems from the blood supply of the liver, which comes from both the portal vein and the hepatic artery. Tumors tend to receive most of their blood from new arteries created by angiogenesis. On the other hand, a majority of the blood and oxygen supply to normal liver tissue is provided by the portal vein. So, even if the embolization agent affects normal liver arteries, the tissue still gets a majority of its normal blood supply. To start off, as we are taught in our normal anatomy classes, the hepatic arteries normally arise from the celiac trunk, which is the first major branch of the abdominal aorta around the T12 vertebral level. The celiac trunk gives rise to the splenic artery, left gastric artery, and the common hepatic artery. The common hepatic artery in turn gives off the gastroduodenal artery before becoming the proper hepatic artery. The proper hepatic artery then splits into the right and left hepatic arteries. Only about 60% of the population has the standard anatomy, so you are likely to see a variation of this anatomy during your IR rotation. Two of the most common variants of hepatic anatomy are shown here. On the left is a right hepatic artery which comes off of the superior mesenteric artery instead of the proper hepatic. This is often referred to as a replaced right hepatic artery. It is estimated that 9-15% to of the population has this variant of anatomy. The case on the right is known as an accessory left hepatic artery. The normal right and left hepatic arteries are still present but now there is an additional artery to the left lobe of the liver coming off of the left gastric artery. It is estimated that 4 to 11% of the population has this variant of anatomy. In 1966, Dr. Mickles published his classification scheme for hepatic arterial anatomy based on his dissections of approximately 200 cadavers. The first and most common is the classic anatomy we earlier went over. Mickels II is a replaced left hepatic artery similar to the replaced right hepatic artery we discussed earlier. Instead of arising from the superior mesenteric artery, though, the replaced left hepatic comes off of the left gastric. Mickels III is the common variant we discussed earlier of a replaced right hepatic artery arising from the superior mesenteric artery. Mickels IV is when there is a replaced left hepatic from the left gastric and a replaced right hepatic from the superior mesenteric artery. Mickels 5 and 6 are based upon the classic arterial anatomy with the addition of an accessory hepatic artery. Mickels 5 adds an accessory left hepatic artery from the left gastric artery, while Mickels 6 involves an accessory right hepatic artery from the superior mesenteric artery. Mickels 7 is when there is a classic hepatic arterial anatomy with both an accessory left and an accessory right hepatic artery. Mickels 8 is considered to be one of two options. Either there is a normal left hepatic artery with an accessory left hepatic and a replaced right hepatic as seen pictured in this slide, or one could have a normal right hepatic artery with an accessory right hepatic and a replaced left hepatic. Mickels 9 and 10 involve the common hepatic artery arising from somewhere other than the celiac trunk. The Mickels 9 variant arises from the superior mesenteric artery, while the Mickels 10 variant comes from the left gastric artery. Beyond these 10 classes, you may very well see some other variation on your IR rotations. Beyond liver arterial anatomy, 
it is useful to know the classic we know anatomy of the liver lobes. Lobe 1, or the caudate lobe, is posterior to the rest of the liver and thus not seen on this diagram looking at the liver from the anterior view. The caudate lobe is unique as it is often fed by branches off both the right and left hepatic arteries and directly empties into the inferior vena cava. Lobes 2 through 4 then make up the left portion of the liver and are fed by the left hepatic artery, while lobes 5 through 8 make up the right portion of the liver fed by the right hepatic artery. Lobes 6 and 7 are posterior, while lobes 5 and 8 are anterior. Moving on to the procedure itself. The beginning step of any endovascular procedure is accessing the vessel with a micropuncture kit, which is pictured in this image. The micropuncture consists of a needle with the green top to provide initial access into the vessel. A wire encased in the tubing in this image to gain deeper access to the vessel and then a dilator with the red and blue top which replaces the needle to maintain your access into the vessel. Either femoral or radial access can be used for hepatic embolizations. For more information on gaining access, check out our video on femoral access. In order to travel to the liver, you will see two sets of wires and catheters. The first larger set will get you to the celiac artery or superior mesenteric artery if you have a variant of anatomy. Once you reach the branch off the aorta, a small wire and catheter, known as a microwire and microcatheter, will guide you through the smaller vessels to the specific hepatic artery you are aiming to treat. Different practitioners have different wires and catheters they prefer to use, though we will review some names to be aware of. When looking at the larger catheter and wire set, you have to consider the anatomy of the celiac origin. This is the sagittal cut of the aorta with the celiac artery coming off anteriorly and superiorly from the aorta. The celiac artery can come off at different angles, so for different individuals, different catheters may be more beneficial. The sauce selective catheter made by angiodynamics is one catheter commonly used to access the celiac trunk. The first proximal curve helps provide support to keep your catheter from losing access, while the more distal curve provides a convenient shape for accessing the celiac trunk. The Simmons catheter, of which an image is included in this slide, made by Terumo, is another example of a catheter which is good for selecting the celiac trunk with a similar shape as the sauce. The Cobra catheter shape is made by Cook, Terumo, and Angiodynamics, and can be also used to select the celiac trunk. In contrast to the celiac trunk, the superior mesenteric artery arises just below the celiac trunk around the L1 vertebral level. The superior mesenteric artery arises in an anterior inferior direction off of the aorta. It can be accessed using the same tools as the celiac artery. It is often a good practice to check the superior mesenteric artery along with the celiac artery when figuring out what is supplying a tumor, especially when you are considering radial embolization of a hepatic tumor. Once you've accessed the main vessel off of the aorta, so begins the expedition to the specific segment of the liver. Different attendants will have their preferred tools that they tend to use, so we'll briefly mention some of the names you may hear thrown about in the RR suite. When your micro tools are in use, you'll be using the smaller syringes, often 1 to 3 cc's, instead of the larger 30 cc syringes, as are, these are smaller diameter tubes, so they are built to handle lower volumes at a time. Fathom is a microwire made by Boston Scientific with a shapeable tip that can be modified into various shapes to match the tortuosity of vessels. The longer the wire stays within the blood, though, the less it maintains its shape. The Renegade High Flow is a microcatheter paired with the Fathom microwire. This is a catheter through which your embolization material will be injected. Prograte is Turumo's version of a microcatheter which comes with its own micro glide wire called the Turumo GT wire. This image shows the prograte as an example of a microcatheter with its matching micro wire. Boston Scientific also has a microcatheter micro wire set, which is called Direxion and Direxion High Flow. I hope this helps and that you feel well prepared to take on the anatomy and tools of your first hepatic embolization case. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.